Today, I'm going to be coaching you through a high kill fortunes key point while going over a bunch of different tips that will allow you to start to get more kills. And let's go in and immediately jump in here with your drop spot. I get asked all the time, Joe, where is the best place to land? And the truth, there is no best place to land. You can land wherever you want to. Land where you feel comfortable, land where you can win, and land where you can get your loadout down. You know, loadout down is the most important thing. But we do want to understand the hot areas of this map. Grotto, Town, Winery, and Keep. Those are going to be your hot drop spots as well as just your hot areas in general but you don't have to land there to be successful and drop a high kill game and more importantly you can easily get there from anywhere that you land and i want to just show you this right here when i play solo trios i actually land in this spot right here reason being is it's generally not that hot maybe one other team lands here so i can easily win it i can get loadout down and then i can quickly get to some of the hot areas i can get to keep i can get to town i can get to grotto and really start my game from there now when we pick this up right here we're gonna have eighty two hundred dollars so my sole focus at this moment right here even though there's some people around us is getting that loadout down i'm gonna hit these two legendary crates just because they're legendary crates and they are on my way over to the loadout but too many of you die with loadout money you have seventy five hundred dollars you end up challenging one more person you go down and then you end up in loadout blender we've all been there before you cannot get your loadout down you have to wait for the free loadout we've got a team camping the loadout you can never get momentum so remove that factor as soon as you have seventy five hundred dollars combine money get your loadout down now right here we're off to a really good start first of all we already have a uav up we already have loadout i've got another uav in pocket and i've got twenty five thousand dollars here so we're going to be able to get a lot of information and understand where a lot of people are allowing us to make a quick decision you know right here i go ahead and challenge this guy and as soon as i get the down i actually thought he was going to die from fall damage like get the thirst but he doesn't and tcap's going to get kill confirmed but that allows me to immediately go challenge this enemy over here who is completely out in the open you know when you are running around this map you need to constantly be aware of your cover because right here you know i just have to execute there's nowhere that he can actually go and i'm able to easily get that kill by the way i'm using the ak and the blitzen ak is not really in the meta it's actually hits pretty hard but it's just got a lot of recoil blitzen is my favorite smg i'm gonna leave my top five loadouts video for you at the end and real quick by the way if you are looking to get better rebirth fortunes keep modern warfare 2 or warzone 2 as those come out make sure you are subscribed now i want to pause this actually bring this back just a little bit when we talk about fortunes keep there's two things that i want to address in this certain situation that we're dealing with right now first thing is positioning matters more than movement on rebirth everything's fast paced everything's about using your movement to you know reposition and then re-engage a lot of fortunes keep is about positioning we're going to be able to get a lot of kills at range but the second thing here is third partying a lot of you go joe i'm constantly getting third party i don't know what to do well the answer is you got to know where everybody is the more information that you have the more you can position yourself accordingly keeping in mind that third party and i tell you that because right here i'm pushing into two teams and i know i'm pushing into two teams so i have to be aware of that and be careful now, as soon as I get this kill right here, we're going to go challenge. We're going to use the resurgence dynamic. You know, make sure you're checking the minimap after you get a kill. And I'm going to immediately position myself for these two enemies that are on my level. Now, I'm able to pick up the second kill right here. We get the down, we get the thirst, and once again, we've got UAV. So I'm going to quickly pop UAV here, which gives me information about where everybody is. So once again, I can figure out who I want to challenge and how I want to challenge them. So as I push up to these guys on my level... And, and notice this right here. Notice this little hesitation, right? I don't just go push this. On Rebirth, I would get much closer, much more in the action. But notice how I just use this truck as my cover, and I'm able to, you know, tag a little bit. I get the break, and now I actually push up. Now, let's talk about this. I actually buy a precision. I don't recommend buying precisions because, you know, they're useful, but, like, they are very... They're, they're very hit or miss, for lack of a better term. But I have so much cash, I'm actually going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to use precision. I'm going to buy another UAV. And now I'm actually going to push up once I get this down. But notice how, because I have information here, I know exactly what I am pushing into. There were two enemies here, right? When I Right here, when I call the precisioning, you can see two enemies on the minimap. But once I get the down, and because I have a UAV up, I now know that I'm only pushing into one enemy, and I can play this more aggressive. Now, I also know that there are people to my left. So when we talk about dropping higher kill games, a lot of it is taking in information. And that allows you 
to make a quick decision. We're going to go ahead and get the down and thirst. But as soon as I do that, I notice one over to my right. So I'm going to farm that last guy so that I have more opportunities to get a hot kill game. You know, we're going to leave them alive. And now immediately focus over here. And this is a little bit of execution right here. We're able to hit shots. We're able to use our positioning. I notice another enemy. I catch him right here. I catch the Violet Rose skin right about here. So now we're going to go ahead and challenge. And yes, a big part of dropping high kill games is going to be execution. But execution is very prescriptive. As I'm going to challenge this guy uh, that I just downed right here, I'm going to use his stim and break his camera. But aim and movement is very prescriptive. That is on you to improve. Where I can help you get better is the gameplay strategy, the decision making, the paying attention to cash flow, making sure you're getting UAVs up, the approaching of fights, the repositioning, all of those different decisions in a game. But aim and movement is very much on you to improve. Now, right here, once again, we pop another UAV. We've still got $10,000. I mean, we are in a very good spot in this game. And you're going to see that throughout this game that I constantly have information up. Information is arguably more important on Fortune's Keep than it is on Rebirth because of that third party dynamic, because there are so many different levels to this map. So, Notice how close the ones are down below me by the buy station. Actually, back behind me, there's two buy stations. So I I see these guys very close together, and I don't necessarily want to drop down. That's a very dangerous spot to be because you can get shot from above. You can get shot from down below. We're going to go ahead and hit shots with the AK right here. Like I said, it hits very hard. It's just got a ton of recoil. I mean, I'm yanking it down on this right stick. So now I am going to go ahead and engage. And once again, you, we talk about the difference between Rebirth and Fortune's Keep. It's about positioning. Look at the angle that I'm putting myself. At. I still have a lot of cover. I'm not just putting myself in this engagement yet. I'm able to get that down, but I cannot go push in and get this thirst because there's still two other enemies around, and I have no idea where exactly those guys are. So I've got to be a little bit more cautious. Now, one of the biggest things I can tell you is don't be afraid if you have enough information about where people are don't be afraid to disengage and go push another team you know this team is very close together at this point and now i'm gonna go ahead and i heard shooting back behind me this way so i'm gonna go ahead and see what i can find i'm able to get that down once again thought i'd get the kill to fall damage but i don't so i'm forced to actually thirst this guy Okay, we get information. We don't get a ton right there, actually. We know they're somewhere over that way. So now we're going to go ahead and change our pace here. I always talk about slow down to speed up. And what I mean by that is I know that there's people over this way where I killed that guy. I know there's people down below. But let me just slow down for a quick second and buy a UAV because then that allows me to speed up. That allows me to once again make quick decisions. And I can see exactly where everybody is. So I'm going to go ahead and push over this way. I know that there's people over to my left. Those three guys are very close together down below. So I'm actually going to go ahead and see what I can find over this way. We're able to get this kill right here. We get the down once again. The AK it hits very hard. It's just guys it's very it's hard to use it's it, try it out for yourself you'll see just how much recoil there is and once again notice how i'm trying to get it down right here like i just can't get that initial knock and we're in trios so if i get that initial knock then it's a 1v2 situation and i can go ahead and challenge this but until i get that knock like i've got to be very cautious because they are a three team uh you know a three stack essentially and i can't go challenge all three at one time i can go challenge two at one time because you can use your aim and movement to get out of that but three is very difficult so we're going to go ahead, disengage that team. And then right here, I'm just trying to see what I can find. Like, I am pushing a hot area of the map. I'm pushing back towards Gatehouse. I'm trying to see if there's anything over in, like, you know, the church area over to my left. You know, maybe there's some shots in Winery or in Keep. But as soon as I'm pushing up here and I don't kind of get anything... I actually decided to go back and re-engage over here. You know, this is the concrete information that I have. The concrete information that I have is people over to my left. So I'm going to go ahead and act on that. And I would encourage you to start to do that more. A lot of you tend to just wander and not really do anything, even though you're getting information. Now, right here, as I'm pushing up, notice how as I'm wandering back to where I have concrete information, which was like, you know, further back over this way, maybe by Overlook or that area, I get information that there's a loadout, right? I see the loadout drop which now tells me there's another team around here, which happens a lot of times. 99% of the time when you were just acting on some piece of information, you know, you're going to get another piece of information before you get there. Now, they call in Cluster Strike. I run away from the Cluster Strike. I run all the way away, and then it hits me. Not a big deal, though. I'm just going to play this a little bit patient right here. I know that there's two guys around me. I know that there's guys right up the hill, and you're going to see one run right in front of me, but he didn't down me, so he doesn't necessarily know that. I that guy doesn't know that I'm right here, right? He, I guess, didn't see me. The team that is down below is the one clustering me. By the way, 10 kills, still 10 other teams. So watch how we get out of this. Now we're going to go ahead. We're going to stim right here. 
I'm gonna challenge immediately because I didn't know where that guy was and now I get shot in the back now in this moment right here I'm pretty confident that I'm dead I'm getting precision I'm getting clustered somebody's around me I've got shooting over to my right but sometimes you just got to make a move and fight your way out of it it's not gonna necessarily make sense how you get out of it and you're gonna be like how did I just do that but I Get it down there because he got sniped from the right side. This dot right here, he got sniped by that guy as well, which is how I'm able to get out of that. If he doesn't get sniped, I'd probably die here. But now I immediately focus on these guys over here. They've got zone pushing in. And what I'm going to end up doing is just basically not even worrying about fighting them. Like, I'm in such a losing spot right here. So I'm going to go ahead and stim for the speed boost, right? Not for the health boost. I stim for the speed boost. And we're just going to go ahead and wait. I just need to get replated, and then I can re-engage. You know, as soon as you are replated, you want to re-engage and get back into fights. You never want to try to fully disengage unless you're at a massive disadvantage. Like the team that was down below and just three stacking, right? I'm never going to fully disengage unless, you know, I'm at a big disadvantage or I have other information. Now, I know that there are still people down below here, right? I knew there were at least one, if not two teams down below. So watch what ends up happening. I'm going to go ahead. I hear this guy right here. We're going to be able to get the down, and I just leave him. I don't worry about the thirst. I've got gas pushing in, and I'm still concerned about these guys down below. Here's why. When we talk about fortunes, keep we talk about positioning. Look at the minimap right here. As I push up... I want to show you this right here. Right about here where this red dot is, like right in this area, is where the ladder is to get up. So they're either going to have to push towards me and push up the ladder, or they're going to have to keep pushing straight ahead and stay underneath. Well, I'm going to go ahead and anticipate right here around the corner. Notice how I check. I literally check right here where I'm expecting them to be. We're able to hit shots right there. We're not able to get the down, but now we're able to get the down right there. And I'm still worried about another player. Like, I'm still anticipating that there's more coming up right here. And as I get the thirst, I mean, that's exactly what happens. Notice it's not one from that team, but I did tell you there were two teams down here. And that's one tip that I have for you is do not forget information. That's going to allow you to, once again, keep in mind that third party. It's also going to allow you to make that quick decision about where to go next. That's one of the biggest things is a lot of you aren't totally confident with where to go. The more information you can take in when we have a UAV up, you know, our goal with a UAV is two things. My goal is to get as many kills as possible during that 30 seconds that we have it but also to take in as much information as possible. So if I get to a situation where I'm like, I'm not totally sure where people are, I can go, oh, I remember that there were people over this way. I can go ahead and push that way and see what I can find. Then we go back to the wandering with a purpose, and more times than not, as you're wandering over to that team, you're going to run into something else, and then you can act on that. So we're going to go ahead. We've got UAV up here. As I said, we've got a lot of UAVs, and not only do we have UAV up, I've got another one in pocket. So UAVs last 30 seconds. They ping every three. So I'm going to use that to my advantage. We're going to anticipate around the corner. Notice how I actually slide cancel. You see my character. Watch my character in the bottom right, right hand corner right here. Watch when he stands up. Right, so he's already up. I canceled my slide, which allows me to stop in place. I'm going to go ahead and hit shots right here. We get the down and thirst. And now we challenge with momentum. Notice that one is on my level straight ahead. One is flying in. So when we talk about farming teams, like I talked about earlier, there's two players alive. So I can go ahead and kill this one straight ahead. I took no damage. I still got or a little bit of damage. I took, you know, I still got 44 rounds. So we're going to go ahead and challenge right here. We get the down and thirst. Uh, 15 kills now after we pick up the throwing knife and we've still got eight other teams now we're going to go ahead and focus right here when you when you start to get to this moment of you know trying to figure out where to push i've got a lot of people in keep i've got a lot of people in winery i don't love fighting in keep i think keeps a very difficult place because of all the levels you know somebody could be six levels above you when if you're on the bottom floor they could be anywhere in between you and the roof which makes it very difficult to challenge now once again when we talk about fortunes keep and we talk about positioning so much of this is about strategy so right here you know i, I probably slow my pace down a little bit just to take these two free kills watch how patient I am I am waiting until I can get that knock and the reason I'm waiting is because I know that they have to push to me so what's going to end up happening is I'm just trying to see look how patient I am I haven't shot yet because they don't know that I'm here now we're going to go ahead we kill number one we flick to number two right there and once again the AK is really good just very difficult to use especially at range because of how much recoil it has right there is a good range for it because it hits so hard but you are yanking down and once you get further and further away you're going to see that right here just how difficult it is to use because we're gonna miss out on some kills right here simply because we're using the cold war ak 
once again playing positioning look at the minimap right here look where they have to get to they have to rotate out in the open over here and this is where positioning matters you know i think tcap who i play with taught me a lot about this because you don't on rebirth i like to fight on top of everybody i like to play quick i like to finesse i like to use my smg and use that mobility but on fortune's keep we can pick up a lot of kills and put ourselves in a better position because we're not in as much danger to die right here you know even if this guy shoots back at me i easily have cover right here you know t i obviously can't go down because you know i don't have self revive so you need to be aware of when you have self and when you don't have self if you don't have self don't be too over aggressive especially in those long range situations be a little bit more cautious knowing that you can go down now right here once again we're going to talk about keeping the pressure on i've been talking about this a lot lately in my videos is when i get this break and and i have the live ping don't necessarily chase you can either chase him and keep that pressure on or you can go ahead and reposition take a different angle now if you do chase just be ready because he could be trying to break your camera first step of breaking camera is breaking that line of sight by the way i completely lose him he makes a good play here i end up finding him right there now if you chase just anticipate because you don't want to get your camera broken if you reposition and take a different angle just make sure you're keeping that pressure on 19 kills we got six other teams and right here i hear the double res so we're going to go ahead and challenge based on this information you know in this moment i have i have information that there's ghosted players over to my left but i'm not totally sure where they are so as i go to find them and of course i know there's people in keep but i don't know what level or where exactly they are so as i hear the double res i'm gonna go push over this way because it's concrete information i know that somebody's over here and now i just gotta find him thankfully i have tracker i mean tracker's actually kind of nice when you pick it up off the ground but don't don't go tracker don't use tracker use combat scout I, that's what i use just because i think it's a the best perk in terms of taking away the re-challenge component the biggest thing with with combat scout is your enemy kind, it kind of gives away your enemy's next move i talk so much about being unpredictable and keeping your enemy guessing as to what your next move is combat scout kind of takes that away because you'll see if they're re-challenging you'll see if they're going to reposition you'll see where they're repositioning to right here we're going to go play aggressive we're going to push right in here challenge this guy anticipate 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 we had all high damage areas with the blixen 21 kills five other teams and now Look, this is where I've said up until this point, I don't like fighting in keep, but we kind of have no choice, right? We we do have to push in here based on endgame. And I always talk about in endgame power positioning cover, right? Where can I be in circle that has cover and is the best position possible? But what I want to highlight in this game is there's already people top keep. So what I'm going to do is wait a circle. I'm going to see where this next circle goes. And then from there, I'll figure out how we can position ourselves to be in the best position possible. Every single time that circle closes, you need to be asking yourself, where is my power position? Where is my cover? And then from that point, you can really start to rotate to that area. But it doesn't, you don't, always have to have it in every single circle if you're not in a good spot you can just wait a circle and then go back in now we're going to push into keep right here we're going to anticipate i'm trying to figure out now i kind of know that i do need to go into keep by the way we're going to shoot through the wall at the live ping unfortunately can't get anything and the only reason i did that is because i saw the shots coming down so i saw the shots coming down and i was like could i possibly shoot and get this live ping right here and i was uh, obviously not now we're going to go ahead and push up right here I'm going to hear one over to my left as well as get tracker. So we're going to execute. We're going to hit, get the down thirst. Watch this play, by the way. Notice this one right here. I see one straight across. I'm not in a good spot. So we're going to go ahead and stim. We're going to break. But notice that we're caught. He still has the advantage right here. So what I'm going to end up doing is using the, the live ping component. But I'm actually going to go challenge here. And we're going to get that down. We're going to get that thirst. And that's just one where we have to be a little bit aggressive. Keeping that pressure on that enemy. Now we've got 23 kills. We got two other teams here. We've got three other people. So during endgame, you want to note not only how many teams are live, but also where are they? That's part of remembering information is taking in as much as possible, especially during endgame. Because in this moment, let's say I know that there's somebody top keep, and then I see this tracker right here. I can see some footsteps. Then at that point, I know, okay, I've got one enemy over here. I've got two enemies above. I know where everybody is, and I can make a good decision based on that. Now, I don't know where this last team is. So we're able to get the team wipe right there we've got 2v2 and right here you're gonna see them yep i see them and i get absolutely smoked so we're gonna go ahead and just play it up like i've got cover i'm trying to see what i can find they throw the pds down so i know that they're up there and now we're able to get one while he's jumping once again i cannot get the death to fall damage so what i'm gonna end up doing here is i'm gonna precision airstrike ahead of where they have to move 
kind of force them to stay in gas a little bit because they can't directly push into where they need to get to or else they're going to die to that precision. And we have really good positioning right here because they've got to rotate right to us. And we do have cover. T-Cab's got cover to the left. I've got cover right here with the car. We're just going to go ahead. T-Cab's going to push in to clean this up. I hope you found today's video helpful. As I always say, let's get better today and I will see you tomorrow. Nice little 40 kill game right there. Let's get better today and I will see you tomorrow.